Hi there, it's been May, so there's a new update for Project for the Web. Uh, there is a new way to import project files and there is a licensing change for P1. So there's a lot of exciting things to cover and uh, let's head on over to the blog post. Now don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if this video is useful for you, of course. But let's dive into that blog post because on the project blog, there's actually three articles that are interesting to watch. There's a description on what has changed on the licensing bit, uh, which is a very specific article that we're going to look into later in this video. And there is a video created by Microsoft itself explaining the different levels of complexity of Microsoft Project. Now be aware that Microsoft Project now is the term for project for the web if it comes from Microsoft itself. Microsoft is really going for Microsoft Project is equal to project for the web. Now, as we've seen in previous videos, this is not the case yet. So please keep that in mind when you're looking at the video that's on screen now. But we're not going to dive deep into the video. Just go ahead and watch that video yourself if you're interested in IR Project for the Web or Microsoft's vision of Microsoft Project at this time. We are interested in the May Project Update blog because there's a number of things that are updated and they are importing Project Desktop to Project for the Web We've seen this before, but now there is a neat little interface. So we're going to see that in action in just a moment. Then there is a collaboration corner presence. Now, I love everything with corners, obviously, uh, because this is the project corner, but we're going to see that in action as well. And then there is filtering on the board and timeline views. And I want to point out that this is currently rolling out and I haven't been able to find that in my environments. So I'm going to leave that for a future session. Then there's scheduling modes and veteran project users might be familiar with the scheduling engine of Microsoft project and how it affects how a resource is assigned to any of the tasks. This is very nice because now you have the option to change that scheduling mode. There's a bit of a tricky side on how to find where to change this. So I'm going to walk you through that. And then the final feature that has been added is that you can now change the project language settings. And I'm going to show you that as well. So because Project for the Web is a cloud-based solution and Microsoft rolls this out to different environments, to different tenants all over the world, some of these features might not yet be available on your end. Case in point being the import for from Project Desktop, because from the previous video where I uh, demoed the creation of Project Accelerator, and I'll put a link in the show notes, there is not an option to create a new, or <laughs> there is not an option to import a Microsoft Project Plan from Desktop. If I navigate to my own environment, I have an additional option import from project desktop. Now, as you've seen in the previous video where I demoed how this is done through code, there are some limitations and I've tried to build a Microsoft project schedule that has all these limitations in there. And let's see how that affects the schedule as a whole. So I have Microsoft project open here in a template. This is the new business template that you can download uh, by going into new and then finding it right here. So what we have here is we have a schedule and it has a deadline. It has a baseline. It has multiple tasks modes. It has a different calendar in there and it has uh, tasks with lag in there. It has tasks with start to start, finish to finish. Uh, start to finish all the different kinds of dependencies that you would normally see. And I can also add, for instance, a, um, a different task type, which we're going to look into later today also. And I can have a constraint date, for instance, and let's say, um, start no earlier than 
and I'll do that two weeks after and we'll see that nice dip in here so this is now a difficult schedule for project foot web to actually look into we've also added resources generic resources to be specific generic resources with costs associated with them so if we click on save now I have the new business import version 2 and I want to import that to project for the web so navigating to project for the web I'm going to click on that drop down box and if this is initiated in your tenant you will see this import from project desktop so I'm going to choose the MPP file and from here I'm going to open the new business import version 2 so clicking on open I'm actually presented with the new import and it's going very fast but there are some unsupported actions in here and as I mentioned there are a lot so keep that in mind when you're navigating through importing your projects into project for the web this is not something that you would typically do with production data that is heavily used at this moment so manually scheduled tasks aren't supported deadlines aren't supported the resources are all removed from the tasks there is no baseline and there is a couple of links that aren't supported because project for the web currently only supports finish to start dependencies now if you want to know more about the limitations of the current import version uh, click on that help button here and you'll be navigated to a blog article where more information is mentioned about how to import and what the current limitations are within that Lim uh, within that import option so other than that I really enjoy that this import project situation is now way easier than opening PowerShell going into PowerShell commands uh, typing in stuff and then trying to figure out where you are in the process of, of creating that import file um, so I'm enjoying this progress that we're making, but I'm still a bit hesitant in using this because yeah, project users, extensive project users will surely miss a lot of the functionality that is needed for a successful project management solution for them. So keeping those limitations in the back of your head when you're doing this import, this is actually a good improvement on the previous version of importing project desktop so for the next section collaboration corners presence collaboration corner presence I'm going to look into a schedule that is also opened up by my wife who is also a member of this project team so I have the title project which we know and love and used to be called the untitled project and if I navigate here I see that so Miriam has the project logo here and what we see on top here is we see that project logo here as well with her name popping up as well and if I click on that it actually tells me that Miriam van Herk has this project open this is actually a very nice little improvement of project for the web because project for the web is multi-author sensitive so if I open the project in Miriam's situation I'm currently logged in as Miriam and I see myself here. So Erik van Herk is currently open, uh, is currently looking at the schedule as well. So Miriam can now add a third summary, link them together, and I can change the duration of this task to zero days, representing a milestone, obviously. So I can make this two weeks. I'm going to make this um, four weeks. And all these changes are done by Miriam. So I'm wondering if I navigate back to Eric, will I see those changes popping up? And the answer is yes. So great little addition by the Microsoft project team. So I already mentioned that the filtering on board and timeline views aren't available on any of my environments yet, but keep in mind that it will be quite similar to the filter options that we have on the grid view. And once that pops up in your schedule, 
put a comment down below and let me know that you're seeing a, a change in your project schedules. So for the second and third part, we're getting a bit technical. So if you're not a technical person, feel free to click that like button and hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. But if you're still here, let's dive into the scheduling modes. Microsoft's scheduling modes within Microsoft Project have been around for ages. And scheduling modes are like fixed work, fixed units and fixed duration. And previously, Project for the Web only had the fixed units situation. Now, Microsoft only tells you this on the project uh, blog article, um, but I've asked around and asked if I could get some more information. So I got this blog article that was written by the team uh, a while back where it tells us more about the fixed duration, fixed effort and fixed units. Now keep in mind, it tells you specifically that this is related to the project operations application, but it also refers to Microsoft Project and Project Accelerator. So seeing this in action, you need to go into the Power Apps version of Microsoft Project. So this takes you away from the vanilla home and project.microsoft.com scenario, where now we're going to make that powerapps.com navigate to the apps and click on project that opens in our instance it opens the project accelerator which we know from the previous video and if i click on settings and navigate to parameters i get this default organizational unit which is the organization that hosts this project accelerator and if i click on navigate to general I can click to relate it and I can click to project parameters. And if I click on parameter here, it will show up nothing because this is an old version of that tool. Remember where project is linked up to tenants around the world and Microsoft updates the system frequently, uh, but that goes around the whole world. So that might take some time. I do, however, have a version where it does show up and that's in my own tenant here. So if I navigate to my own tenant and I click on related and I click on project parameters and I click on parameters, yeah, there's, there's a way to go. I now have the option to look into the scheduling mode and it's even a required version. Uh, it's even a required setting now. So if I click on this now, I can see fixed effort, fixed duration or fixed units. Now for different types of organizations, different types of fixed scheduling modes makes sense. So be aware of the different types and I can do a deep dive session about the differences here. If that's something that you're looking at, uh, forward to, hit that in the comments below. So for now, I will set that to fixed duration. Updating scheduling mode will impact new projects only. Be aware of that, that the timing of choosing the scheduling mode is very um, important here. And then there's a second one, project level schedule mode override permitted. This gives you the option to actually tell people that they can override something specifically for their schedule. This is only an option if you have a named org. Uh, now that named org situation is described in my project accelerator video. So please have a look at that clicking on save. Now I have a fixed duration scheduling mode. If I want to see that in action, I can navigate to projects and I can create a new project. Uh, new scheduling mode and I can click on save navigating to tasks opens up a, well, I think it's an iframe. I don't know for sure. Uh, it opens up an iframe for project for the web. I can click on effort because I want to see the amount of work that's being done. And I can create a task that says, well, okay, this is a first task. It's assigned to me. Yeah. And 
And if I navigate to this one, I can say, okay, well, uh, let's have it be six weeks and let's set uh, the duration uh, and let's set the amount of effort to 16 hours. So it didn't disappear, but it's here and I can't visualize it anymore. Nice. Let's see if I can click away and click on tasks. All right. Let's see if I can find it on the project home. Where I can find it. Interesting. Created by me. New scheduling mode. Ah, here is the new scheduling mode. So if I can click on it here, I now know that these are fixed duration tasks. So if I change the effort, the duration will not change. Or at least that is my understanding of a fixed duration task. So let's see that in action. And indeed, the duration stays for six weeks. Now, if you change the duration itself, be aware that the effort will also change accordingly. So do not change the duration of a fixed duration tasks after you have entered the, uh, the effort. That is something to keep in mind for sure. And then there is the last part where you ha now have the option to change the language settings of your project installment. So in order to do this, navigate to Project Home, go to the gear on the top right and click on Change Your Language. It brings you to an overall My Account Microsoft section. So be aware that this isn't actually changing just project, but it changes everything on your Microsoft account. So if I change this now and I change the display language to the Netherlands, I actually get a Dutch description that tells me that I need to uh, sign in again. So this is Dutch, by the way. So after you signed out, you can sign in again. And once you're signed in, you'll be navigated to your My Account. And this is now in Dutch. Uh, and once I go to Project, I see that it has the Dutch abbreviation on uh, the URL, actually. And now it is in the... Um, and now the text is whole... And now the whole text is in Dutch which isn't very useful for my YouTube channel. So I'm going to change that back to English. But suffice to say, this is how you change your language in project. And then there is the licensing updates for plan two, uh, for project plan one. Uh, basically, it boils down to the access on the Microsoft Dataverse and being able to actually drill into tailor-made data first tables which basically gives a p1 license access to access to apps such as the project accelerator it also gives you access to the power automate sections for project minded activities so keep keep that in mind that you now have p1 that also allows you to do things in Power Automate when it is in line with project and then there is also the option to create Power BI reports based on your entity. So now with a plan one, you have more access to the project related data tables and project related activities on Power Automate and the rest of the Power Platform. So this is a nice little addition in regards to licensing. And that's it for the May update. There are two features that are mentioned that are upcoming. One is drop down types in custom fields. And the other one is roll up for custom fields. Both are very interesting to look into. So I hope that that comes up in one of the feature release videos that I have in a playlist that you can visit on screen now. If this video helped you out, click that like button. And if you want to see more of me, click on the subscribe. In any case, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.